definitely helps when you've got the case with you, so I'm just going to grab it. There it is. Hey guys, Raspberry Pi for owners can't really complain about not having a great selection of cases and enclosures for their favorite Raspberry Pi 4 boards. Now, the selection goes from excellent Argot One cases, including SSD support, to DeskBike Pro, which, well, look like mini PC. By the way, I already covered DeskBike Pro in the video in the corner there, if you're interested. But those cases are quite often expensive, and they don't even factor in the fact that you have to buy uh, SSD. I mean, it's all cool to have a boot from SSD, but it's not needed for every project out there. And if you want to save yourself a bit of money and still have a really nice desktop-friendly enclosure to tinker with, then Desk by Lite might be the new hot stuff. Just as a Desk by Pro, it shares a very similar design principle. Unlike the previous one, it's not made out of metal, it's made of pretty nice and sturdy plastic. At the back, you'll find a very familiar Raspberry Pi 4 interface, including Ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, and then other ports extended to the back, including 3.5mm jack for your audio, USB Type-C for charging, and here's the surprise, a full HDMI ports instead of uh, micro HDMI ports or mini, was that my mini? mini uh, HDMI ports that are present on the Raspberry Pi 4. While I personally prefer the smaller connectors on the Raspberry Pi 4, I know a lot of you out there care for the regular HDMI ports, so that might be what you're looking for. At the front, you'll find additional two USB a 2.0 ports that you can use to connect either a keyboard or mouse uh, if this is what you want. And there is an indicator light, micro SD card access port and the power button that you can configure to work in both ways. Either your device can wake up uh, using the power button or you can configure it to automatically wake up after the power loss. Uh, this is nicely configured with a switch. While Desk by Lite may look like a micro PC on your desk, it will still allow you to tinker, because it does expose 40 pin GPIO header at the side. Not on that, that if you want to use that header, you have to probably get yourself a ribbon cable. Now, the ribbon cable with a tiny little tip isn't compatible as there isn't any space for that tip, so you'll probably want to shave that off. If you do that, then bear in mind that uh, orientation of the ribbon cable will be crucial. If you want to go ahead with camera-enabled projects, there is also a slot at the back, which you can use to drag the ribbon cable uh, from the back and connect your Raspberry Pi camera. All of that looks really neat on the table, but if you want to hide it, then at the bottom of the case you'll find a mounting socket for screws, which allows you to mount this case either underneath the table or behind the monitor, so that's not the only options that you've got in terms of positioning this case. Now, it's been a while since I've actually got a case that I didn't have to use a manual to assemble, which is nice. The assembly takes around 10 to 15 minutes to go through it, and I think the most complicated part was actually putting the heatsink in place. Now, speaking about the heatsink, I really like this solution because it utilizes the full 40-pin GPIO header to mount uh, to the Raspberry Pi, so you don't really have to go and figure out which way the brackets uh, should go, like I did with the ice cooler uh, tower. You can watch the video in there in the corner. So, I'm all for that. What's interesting about that heatsink as well is the fact that it uses three extra connection points. And don't be like me, initially I forgot to actually include the heat pad for the CPU because the visual indicators only show you three different access points or heat exchange points, which are RAM, Ethernet and uh, USB ICs. So make sure you're gonna put all four heat pads on there to complete the heat transfer between the board and the heatsink. The fan design has changed as well, and this is slightly different fan to what you would expect on other cases like that. We're gonna talk about this fan performance in a second. 
once you screw the heatsink in and close the enclosure, there's only a couple of things that you should remember. Providing that you already specify the hardware behavior of your power button, you still have to configure the extra USB ports. It's only one line to add in a boot text config file, so do remember to do that, otherwise your ports are not going to be working. Another one is the PWM control of the fan. By default, it works with the Raspberry Pi configuration for the fan, so it connects to GPIO 14 by default, and let you enable the fan from 60 degrees onwards. What's really good about this, even at 100% of operational speed, this fan is really quiet. It's actually one of the quietest fans I've seen on Raspberry Pi cases. And since we are talking about cooling performance, let's run some interesting benchmarks. After running a couple of benchmarks, by the way, if you want to uh, see what kind of tools I'm using for this, I have a write-up in a corner in there, I came to a conclusion that startled me for a second. Now, this case runs actually hotter than the Raspberry Pi without an enclosure, despite having a massive hot heatsink and a fan. And here is why. My first stress benchmark ran at 18 degrees, uh, of ambient temperature without cooling fan enabled, rack up the temperature of 82 degrees in which the Raspberry Pi has throttled despite being connected to a big heatsink. I also run alongside the same benchmark on the Raspberry Pi without an enclosure and the temperature was significantly lower. The second benchmark I run with the fan enabled and as stated by my profile, the fan would kick in once the board's temperature reached 60 degrees. When the fan kicked in, the temperature didn't go over 60 degrees and it was cooler than running naked Raspberry Pi 4, but once everything completed and the Raspberry Pi went back to this idle state, the average temperature of the box was still a couple of degrees warmer than the naked Raspberry Pi. So what gives? Remember that moment when I told you about those different contact points on the heatsink? Well, that has plenty to do with it. While on average the temperature is higher, the heatsink allows cooling to occur in different places on the board. What you end up with is the average temperature between CPU, RAM and two ICs responsible for the Ethernet and the USB. Something that doesn't really have cooling opportunities on the naked Raspberry Pi 4 and doesn't contribute to the total temperatures reported by the CPU. And as the benchmark temperature doesn't really go over 60 degrees, then you can run this case without worrying, especially that all the components on the Raspberry Pi 4 have access to cooling, which can be beneficial. There was one more test I wanted to run for this case, which is Wi-Fi performance, given the case encloses the Raspberry Pi. But thanks to the lots of different venting holes and the fact that the case is actually made out of plastic, I didn't really expect any interference. And after running this board and naked Raspberry Pi side by side and running a couple of APERF3 commands, I quickly confirmed that both boards were reporting very similar uh, results on both bands, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, within the reasonable margin of error. So if you are looking for a nice case that's going to look pretty decent on your desktop and you're not concerned about the SSD performance, then, well, give it a go. It's priced under $30 and it's available right now, so go to the description of this video. As usual, guys, I do not have any schedule with my videos, so use YouTube tools provided to get notification. You know how it all works, I'm not going to explain you that. But do follow me on social media if you want to get an update on the projects I'm currently working on. As for now, do let me know what do you think about Desk Pi Lite, and I'll definitely see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. The heatsink allows cooling uh, to. The heatsink allow cur. The heatsink allows. The heatsink allows cooling to occur on different. The heatsink allows curing to cooling. The heatsink allows cooling to occur on different. The heatsink allows cooling. <clears throat> the heatsink allows cooling to a. The heatsink allows cooling to a. <laughs> The heatsink allow cooling. The yes, I know. <laughs> the heatsink allows cooling to occur 